Thank you very much for your interest uh, to learn about uh, Central Asia. And uh, context is uh, like uh, uh, Central Asia and Russia, uh, evolution of uh, uh, these relations between Russia and Central Asia. So uh, uh, in order to start uh, um, uh, to approach this topic, uh, let me tell you a bit about Central Asia as such. Central Asia, as you know, today is 70 million population region. And uh, I was uh, right, uh, I came right now from New York where we had a high level meeting on uh, peace building, sustaining peace and uh, uh, still Central Asia is prone to crisis region and uh, certainly uh, the wish is uh, uh, to, uh, if Central Asia will be united region, otherwise uh, each of us uh, uh, in separate, uh, the, uh, all of us, uh, um, you would not see uh, on the map uh, uh, Kazakhstan and uh, I guess Mr. Trump was or uh, someone uh, merged Kazakhstan with Kyrgyzstan. Uh, it's uh, very strange then uh, what come up uh, and um, so, uh, in other words, uh, stance, five stance. Uh, I, I do understand that uh, you have such a, uh, 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 such a wording here in uh, uh, the US. Uh, uh, by the way, stan is a Sanskrit word, which means uh, uh, that th these people situated in this place, so stan. Um, Kyrgyzstan uh, is uh, one of the five of those Central Asian countries and uh, 70 million, as I said, uh, the whole region. And uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan is 6 million. The largest is Uzbekistan with 32 million population country and Kazakhstan 17 million and uh, about uh, from seven to eight. Now Tajikistan is very rapidly growing uh, country uh, regarding population. So um, uh, each of us uh, today, uh, after quarter of a century of independence, uh, more or less uh, known uh, in the world. Uh, uh, but still, uh, the problem is uh, to be united region. United region, it's uh, something what uh, uh, will be very desirable for uh, all of us uh, in the future. Um, Central Asia uh, was uh, has Soviet uh, story in its uh, um, in its development, uh, uh, starting from uh, 1860s. Uh, uh, almost each of us uh, we've been uh, uh, joined uh, or concorded or uh, um, uh, uh, converged with Russia. And uh, um, I do remember when I came to uh, to uh, Fairfax in uh, in Alaska, and uh, I visited the museum there. Uh, I have seen how Alaska was sold in 1861 uh, by Russia to the U.S. And uh, exactly this time, it's critical time overall in the uh, history of the world. So, um, around this time, uh, Central Asia uh, became part of uh, uh, Russia, Tsarist Russia. And uh, I, I thought it's uh, logical that uh, uh, Russia has uh, got uh, such a big uh, part uh, uh, close to itself. And uh, Central Asia, uh, again, was very uh, important for Russia with regard of raw materials like cotton, uh, grain, and uh, uh, meat, and whatever. Uh, uh, and at the same time, uh, Russia has decided uh, then to sell uh, Alaska uh, to the US. It was uh, uh, behind the continent uh, and so why it, it should keep. Uh, this is just my observation, which I found uh, um, uh, watching the uh, exposition in uh, uh, the museum there. 
uh, all of us, uh, we joined to uh, Russia in the uh, 1860s, and uh, 1917, uh, uh, the story of Soviet Russia has started. Uh, um, this um, uh, 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 the establishing of each uh, country, uh, it was again a quite complicated process and so we are learning now every day while we are uh, establishing our independence uh, and uh, uh, rewriting our history that uh, what kind of people um, leaders uh, used to live, uh, how they sacrificed their life uh, to, uh, in order that uh, Kyrgyzstan or uh, Kazakhstan became independent, uh, and especially for Kyrgyzstan and for Tajikistan to become as uh, separate countries uh, out of Turkistan. That was the whole story, and there are a lot of now, of course, researches, books, and uh, not only uh, in our parts, uh, but uh, US researchers also, uh, they, they uh, for, um, issue, uh, published a lot of uh, good books uh, about this. Um, Soviet story, this is uh, something what uh, is, uh, uh, very close to our memory, to our uh, operation. Um, uh, Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet Union certainly gave us a lot. It's, it's impossible to deny. And uh, when uh, we travel uh, towards to Asia these days, and uh, I must confess you that, uh, yes, uh, uh, being part of the Soviet Union, we also tend to um, uh, tend to lo uh, look uh, Europe, uh, United States, and uh, the first years of our independence, United States played such a crucial role and uh, as ambassador of my country, emerging country to the United States, I uh, certainly made a lot to build our uh, such a close relations. Uh, but now I must tell you that uh, uh, the, um, uh, we, uh, f the desire of people, their motion, their ideas, very close tied to Asian countries. Uh, Asian countries are very close to us. So um, uh, ch China, we have a thousand kilometer border with China. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan. Um, uh, from Bishkek, if you fly to Delhi, it is uh, three and a half hours flight. So it's uh, very close, as you understand. Um, if you fly to Lahore, it is the same of three and a half hours. And uh, from Tashkent, you fly to every city of uh, big uh, major city of India and uh, Pakistan uh, to uh, uh, any Southeast Asian country. So <coughs> with this regard, uh, I would say that uh, um, today a lot of uh, young people also uh, they uh, study Chinese language, they want to go to China, uh, magnitude of China is huge these days, and uh, watching this uh, dynamism and uh, uh, successful development of China, uh, there is a uh, for, um, uh, uh, young people's uh, desire really uh, to learn uh, Chinese language. Um, uh, 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 and I started to tell you about this because, uh, to my mind, uh, 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 certainly we are a Euro-Asian country. As soon as you come to Bishkek, and I hope that this is uh, not just a compliment uh, to our ears, but uh, this is true, um, Bishkek, Almaty, they are very living cities. So you would find all sorts of cuisine there. You would find all sorts of entertainment and uh, a, a young uh, population of uh, our uh, capitals uh, are very such a, a dynamic. Uh, we have uh, in Bishkek only uh, three uh, at least international universities which are very attractive for young people. One is American University in uh, Central Asia, uh, be, uh, uh, funded by Soros and American government. Uh, another is uh, uh, Central Asian University, uh, which funded by Aga Khan. And uh, uh, the third one is uh, Turkish University. 
uh, Turkish university also has a lot of students uh, from all of the Asia. Um, I, uh, and, uh, I, I do believe that uh, Kazakhstani university, they are uh, really uh, much uh, no, more wealthy and they have uh, more uh, uh, opportunities for students and uh, uh, they have international uh, quadrum of students. Um, the, uh, I, I'm telling again, this is Eurasian cities, and so we have uh, everything what came from Europe, ballet, opera, uh, for theater, uh, classical theater, and uh, as soon as you would go to Urumqi, to China, to Afghanistan, to India, to Pakistan, so they are pure Asia. And uh, of, uh, not in negative sense, but uh, they don't have this uh, European uh, of, uh, arts uh, as uh, we do. And uh, to, to my mind, uh, certainly the impact of uh, Russia was, uh, and Russia for us is as Europe, the uh, impact of Russia was huge and uh, Russian language still widely spoken in all of our countries. Although, as you know, the latest development is like uh, um, Uzbekistan and uh, uh, Turkmen Turkmenistan seems to me also they have uh, Latin, uh, uh, no, uh, Cyrillic. Uh, from Cyrillic they moved to Latin, um, uh, Latinica. Uh, in Kazakhstan also, they started to move and they have deadline 2025 when the whole country should uh, uh, speak uh, and write, uh, uh, no, write in, in, in Latinica. Uh, in my country, uh, we use uh, Cyrillic alphabet and uh, we still, um, uh, all the uh, universities, they do speak uh, uh, in Russian uh, and uh, of, uh, widely spoken. Although uh, the efforts of uh, the country to build, to fund, to establish Kyrgyz language is huge. Politics, local politics is today uh, spoken on uh, Kyrgyz language. The parliament speaks Kyrgyz and uh, uh, all the uh, documentation now started to move uh, into Kyrgyz language. Uh, in my country, it took a quarter of a century. I do remember like it was uh, in those countries like Azerbaijan. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, um, uh, Georgia and uh, Armenia, but uh, Azerbaijan and uh, Uzbekistan. They started immediately uh, write and speak uh, in their languages. Uh, this is... Uh, um, uh, so uh, I'm talking about uh, the impact and the influence of uh, Russian culture, Russia. Um, uh, Russian government is very much concerned that uh, the um, areal of Russian language uh, uh, is uh, getting a bit narrow. But at the same time, I must uh, tell you that uh, uh, there is a no, uh, not so much investment from Russia uh, to build uh, Russian language uh, uh, to, uh, to, to help uh, uh, all of us uh, to learn more. Certainly, we have TV, Russian TV, in, uh, I guess in all countries, uh, in every country of Central Asia. And uh, it is about uh, especially Kyrgyzstan and uh, Kazakhstan. But uh, um, books, theaters, uh, such a humanitarian uh, exchanges, I do believe that uh, they are still limited and uh, we wish to have more. Um, books especially, uh, for, there is a no book uh, today which will be not uh, uh, translated immediately uh, on the next day into Russian. And it is great. And uh, if we go to Moscow, certainly we, or you can uh, of, uh, subscribe and get uh, uh, back home immediately, uh, you get uh, all these uh, books. Uh, but uh, uh, the point is uh, uh, really to, uh, uh, to have um, those books in uh, uh, my country and um, 
uh, I must tell you, especially for children. Um, uh, migration is huge from my country. The same with Uzbekistan, the same with Tajikistan. So all of uh, all our unemployed people, they go to Russia to find a job. And uh, um, so far, um, our relations are very close also. And uh, we uh, certainly um, live in consensus in many ways. Uh, uh, having in mind that uh, uh, such a migration population uh, uh, from our countries is huge and Russia accommodates. We had a lot of problems and uh, troubles uh, when uh, um, uh, these uh, workers, uh, they've, been, uh, uh, they, they've been in bad hands. Uh, in other words, very, uh, such a uh, tough, very... Uh, um, uh, we had uh, victims of uh, migration also, but uh, it is uh, time goes on, and uh, uh, Russian population also understand better and better that uh, uh, Russia has problem uh, uh, such a um, uh, gap uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with uh, um, no uh, how to say demographic gap demographic crisis. And uh, they need uh, uh, people. For example, I must tell you that uh, some universities uh, from Russian provinces, they just come to us, recruit students, because they do realize that probably it's transition time for them. They don't have students these days. Uh, most probably they have uh, one day, uh, they will have one day, and they should uh, survive. They should leave this. Uh, uh, empty period, and uh, in our uh, uh, small cities, uh, very often, exactly this time of the year, you would find a lot of such uh, uh, recruitees who would come and uh, recruit our young people. No, of course, with good uh, such uh, uh, marks uh, to go to study in Russia. And uh, Russia today and Moscow and St. Petersburg, they can't live without all our uh, migrants because all this work on the uh, ground floor and below ground floor, it's done mostly by migrants from Central Asia. Um, they started to uh, analyze, confess it, uh, uh, understand this fact and uh, relations now, uh, attitude towards uh, to migrants is better. Law is coming, rule of law in this uh, uh, part uh, of uh, the um, activity. Um, uh, our, uh, re uh, our situation, uh, our relations between uh, Russia and Central Asia over this quarter of century has gone through quite a um, uh, quite a rich period. It was not uh, just uh, uh, we have divorced, uh, never know each other, and never will meet each other situation. So uh, it was uh, difficult days. Uh, we had, uh, I, I do remember when I came to Washington DC in 92, July 92, then uh, uh, Russia just cut uh, all of uh, our uh, economies from itself uh, and uh, we're supposed to survive. And uh, of, uh, some of us, we've been on subsidies from the uh, central budget uh, uh, and uh, it was uh, really a very serious situation. And uh, IMF, World Bank, they became our uh, father mother uh, of those days. They started to lend us money, and uh, that was the transition when we uh, got through uh, very uh, such a, a challenging time. Uh, later, uh, we, uh, security matter was always very uh, such an imperative matter. Uh, in the security, uh, um, we had uh, problems uh, uh, all the time. Uh, Tajikistan plunged into the uh, civil war, and uh, to bring uh, them to the peace, it took a lot of efforts from everyone, from Russia first of all, and each of us, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, we helped also to bring uh, peace uh, in uh, Tajikistan. My country was a troubled country, a troubler in, uh, Asia, in, in Central Asia. 
uh, we've, uh, as you know, uh, we've gone through two revolution, and uh, still people uh, in uh, uh, neighboring countries, uh, they think that uh, what uh, um, Kyrgyz people, they would uh, probably uh, do another revolution, it was just recently. But the point is, uh, uh, we, we got all of us in very difficult time of development when privatization was in the process. When we're supposed to learn this uh, uh, market economy, we've been challenged with a new form of governance, uh, uh, doing democratization of the society, opening up to the world. And uh, at the same time, uh, the growth of religion uh, uh, in the whole society. Religion was oppressed uh, uh, decades and decades, and suddenly it came up and uh, started to uh, fill up uh, the ho uh, every hole in, in the society. So uh, uh, this was a very, very challenging time. And uh, some of uh, uh, the people in uh, <coughs> such uh, offices like tax, uh, uh, like uh, um, customs, uh, uh, all the uh, people in the force agencies, they used the situation. They started to privatize everything and grab everything what was uh, easy uh, by hands. And uh, it means that uh, at the end of the day, let's say after 10, 20 years, we got the situation 10% uh, of uh, population, they got uh, uh, 80, 90% of the public uh, wealth, and other 90% uh, uh, they got nothing. And certainly, uh, for people with such a, a socialist consciousness, when equality was the uh, philosophy, motto of our life, that was unbearable, absolutely unbearable. And uh, um, in my country, it's happened so that uh, it was open from the beginning uh, in expression, uh, for, um, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, uh, assemblies, everything was in uh, action. And uh, uh, in 2005, we couldn't uh, bear anymore uh, the family uh, ruling, and uh, uh, one president ran away in 2010. Uh, uh, even worse uh, than Akhaev came, uh, another president, his uh, family, his clan started to, uh, to, to privatize everything. And uh, still, all of them, they, are, they live throughout the world. And uh, son of Bakif lives in uh, London in uh, the mansion of three uh, million uh, pounds, uh, cost uh, uh, Bakif himself, he lives in uh, Belarus. Uh, uh, Akhaev lives in Moscow, so uh, these people run away from the uh, country and they are not uh, poor people. They got uh, a lot of things, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a lot of richness uh, uh, from country with themselves. So uh, this is uh, of, um, the situation. Probably other countries, they can bear it. Uh, they can live with it. Uh, uh, there is a opposition uh, which was uh, uh, under uh, the uh, floor or out of the country. As you know, uh, in Uzbekistan was uh, the, uh, that sort of situation. In Turkmenistan, I, I do believe that uh, it's very difficult to, um, to think that it, it is post-Soviet country. Of, uh, I was uh, three, four years ago up there, and uh, I found that uh, this is like a uh, uh, Middle East uh, country, uh, for like uh, uh, Hanat, any Hanat will be like that. So, and so we can't, uh, we couldn't live like uh, for, um, this way. So, uh, it means that uh, uh, the choice of every country was different. Five countries, they have uh, uh, chosen their own way of development. And uh, uh, I must tell you that uh, Russia was not uh, um, oppressive with this regard. Uh, Russia had own troubles and own uh, development problems. And uh, as a uh, uh, um, uh, politician, as person of living there and working, uh, I must tell you that uh, uh, Russia's involvement sometimes is uh, uh, visible and uh, is uh, sensitive. 
um, Russia's attitudes are copied in our part of the world. Um, how today, uh, as you know, NGO community is suffering uh, or media, our uh, leaders, they want to copy exactly to do of us in Russia. It was not uh, uh, up to 2010, for example. Um, unfortunately, then later, a lot of uh, such uh, um, negative things, I would say, uh, it was repeated, copied in my country, and uh, now we have, uh, after 2017, uh, a lot of uh, things to do, restore uh, civil society. Uh, do today uh, uh, reforms in judiciary, um, uh, mass media was, uh, freedom of speech was oppressed and we uh, should restore uh, this also. Um, so Russia um, was, uh, uh, Russia doesn't involve directly, but with uh, its uh, activity in Russia uh, very often became as sample uh, for, uh, to repeat. Uh, um, humanitarian communication between us very limited these days, I would say. I was a member of a board in the Humanitarian Foundation of CIS countries, uh, and uh, this is uh, the problem which we raise all the time in, in this uh, um, in, in the session. Yes, there is a, a university to university connection. Uh, we have uh, sort of common sport uh, uh, events, uh, uh, but still it is uh, uh, not uh, of such intensity which uh, people wish. And uh, uh, when, uh, when Russia is uh, be, uh, 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 what, uh, pictured as uh, evil, as a very uh, negative way, I would say that, look, in our part of uh, uh, the world, we need Russia. We need uh, uh, healthy Russia, sound Russia, uh, for Russia which is uh, uh, very uh, educated if you compare with all this uh, uh, neighborhood. Uh, for example, Kazakhstan is uh, going uh, very rapidly. Uh, per capita today, Kazakhstan is about 12,000 uh, uh, per capita. Russia sounds like 15,000, but uh, it's almost the same. And uh, uh, Kazakhstan uh, is building its uh, education system completely different. Uh, they have uh, built Nazarbayev schools as uh, such an avant-garde, and they, have, uh, they are inviting uh, expats from uh, English speakers uh, from all of the world, uh, Britain, US, uh, other countries, and they want to uh, uh, shift all the schools to to this uh, uh, to the new system, Cambridge uh, system of education. We can't do in Kyrgyzstan or in Tajikistan and Turkmenistan. So we follow still this the old way of education. And of course, we have uh, private schools where you would find uh, a lot of uh, such advantages, uh, uh, methods, and so on. But it's, uh, you, you can't change the whole system. We don't have too many schools also. For example, in my country, it's about 2,200 schools all together. But it is uh, quite enough uh, in order to change the whole system. And uh, um, uh, we, uh, I was recently in Moscow and met with the private foundation, Rybakov Foundation, and I found that uh, uh, Russia is doing a lot of interesting things. Uh, they do communicate with Europe much closer than us. So, and again, we need to communicate with Russia and learn this experience. Um, and again, Russian language is a common language and everyone will understand, all our teachers, uh, penetration of English language is not uh, wide as we wish. Uh, we are only country in Central Asia out of five where uh, Peace Corps volunteers work. Uh, no other Central Asia country uh, has uh, Peace Corps uh, volunteers. This is uh, good and we uh, 
uh, we preserved this system in, in my country, uh, but it's not enough. And uh, uh, English, uh, uh, we don't have, for example, uh, uh, Bridge Council. Bridge Council has closed its office in Moscow. And I, I thought, why not just open in Kyrgyzstan? But it is, uh, uh, it is impossible to do this this way. So, and uh, um, uh, we would guess we would have uh, much more such a um, uh, language triggers uh, who would uh, come and uh, speak and teach us uh, on other, oh, by the way, we have a lot of uh, Chinese uh, of, uh, speakers and uh, Confucius Institute, not one, but three uh, Confucius Institutes, uh, they work uh, in my country. I'm sure that the same in Tajikistan, the same in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. So this uh, uh, again shows interest of every country. Uh, you should invest, otherwise uh, you can't keep up uh, language, you, ca you can't keep up uh, uh, relations between people. So uh, I would probably summarize uh, that uh, um, security is uh, paramount and uh, we do have uh, uh, very close relations with Russia and uh, uh, it is within the um, not just the CIS, CIS is uh, now uh, less probably uh, such a concrete institution than Eurasian Economic Alliance, which uh, we are part of. Uh, we are part of uh, Shanghai Organization, and uh, this is also about security. We are part of uh, uh, this um, uh, couple of, uh, uh, of such a uh, I would say temporary such a, uh, unions, uh, which uh, is uh, very uh, C uh, CCTO, I guess, yeah, uh, ODKB, we say, Organizacja Dogavora Kolektivnej Bezopasnosti. We are part of this. This is uh, the, the main organization, which is uh, uh, about security. So uh, security is, uh, uh, it, it matters very much. Economically, uh, uh, Russia is uh, the main donor today. Uh, I do understand that uh, among G7 in the past, now Russia is not anymore member of G7, but uh, uh, it somehow it was uh, such a, a distribution that uh, Russia will be in charge of uh, this, uh, regarding the assistance of the small countries of Central Asia and uh, uh, we do know that uh, via World Bank, IMF, uh, UN organizations, uh, uh, grants which are coming, they are most of them from Russia. Um, uh, we, uh, we want, we wish to have more uh, economic uh, relations with Russia. Uh, certainly, there are a lot of uh, investors in Russia, but uh, they don't want uh, to invest in uh, fragile countries. Uh, uh, it's better for them probably invest in uh, strong economies, uh, what uh, Russian uh, business uh, people do. Um, uh, unfortunately, we had not a very successful uh, couple of uh, projects uh, with Russia and uh, this is our uh, experience of Kyrgyzstan. Uh, we, uh, we do uh, um, very uh, close uh, such uh, uh, relations, uh, um, cultural, uh, humanitarian, we want more, as I said earlier, and uh, um, uh, regarding the um, situation geopolitical, uh, Russia wants uh, certainly us uh, to be the closest ally, to be together, although um, uh, every country uh, keeps policy of multi-vector uh, foreign policy. And uh, uh, it is uh, not easy for each of us, but uh, this is uh, uh, the status quo of each country. And uh, uh, we do have uh, close relations with China, with uh, most uh, and foremost with our uh, Central Asian uh, neighbors. And again, I want to tell you that this is our desire and wish to build Central Asian alliance and identity uh, and uh, I, uh, very concrete uh, action 
uh, from uh, uh, new uh, uh, Uzbek president Mirziyoyev, which he expressed recently in Samarkand, and uh, uh, meeting of uh, all the Central Asian presidents took place in uh, Almaty uh, this spring. Uh, it uh, says that uh, the Central Asian alliance is on the way. And we want to be, uh, all of us together, without big neighbors. Not necessarily that they should be in every our talk and alliance. We want to be as family uh, and build up our sincere relations because uh, it's really very difficult to, when we didn't solve many issues uh, with each other. And uh, we do feel that uh, we should uh, speak about this without uh, uh, other uh, people also. So this is uh, pretty much uh, what Central Asia is about today. And uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, transitional problems. Um, unemployment, 60% of Central Asia um, population are young people, 60% out of uh, 70 million. So these uh, people, uh, so far, they, uh, they have uh, um, education. Uh, I, uh, sometimes I, I, uh, I go to Pakistan and I do see that, uh, look, uh, uh, still uh, 40, 50 percent of women, they don't have any education and uh, we are different. And I'm not talking about Afghanistan. We do have, uh, in each Central Asian countries, we have students from Afghanistan. Uh, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, we have 3,000 students from South Asia, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, who studies medicine. So uh, I, I want to say, uh, I want to tell you that after a quarter of a century, we still, uh, uh, we are the uh, educated nations. And so we can't lose this uh, uh, possession. This is, uh, this is real serious, our uh, advantage, uh, educated population. And uh, I do believe that uh, uh, having this, uh, facing these challenges of, uh, uh, of, this, of the next, uh, no, of this century, um, we should uh, uh, respond uh, properly and uh, uh, Kazakhstan, for example, has shown real uh, successes in uh, uh, 2030. Uh, they want to be among 50 the most developed countries. Uh, so we have a role model to go after. And uh, I do believe that uh, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, uh, other Central Asian countries, uh, um, with such uh, traditional partners like uh, Russia, China, Turkey, uh, and uh, U.S., uh, Europe, uh, we, we, we can succeed, and we do our best uh, to succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rosa. Is that, you know, well, we have two microphones here, so when you get up to ask a question, please introduce yourselves and um, ask your question. Please, please, please. Okay, Matt and then you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, <clears throat> my name is Matt. Um, Russia has made it clear that they view former CIS countries as their sphere of influence, and when there are revolutions in those countries, often they become involved in Moldova, in Georgia, in Ukraine, and in 2010, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, they did not become involved. And I'm curious um, how, um, why you think that was what you did uh, in order to reassure them that they didn't have to be worried um, about the future of Kyrgyzstan. No, they've been not involved, and even more, if you remember, uh, when uh, uh, we started uh, to uh, move country towards to parliamentarism, and uh, uh, we thought that uh, it's enough, we fed up with uh, authoritarian presidential regimes, and uh, it was impossible to live like that, and uh, we thought that we should limit it, uh, uh, the uh, president's uh, term. Uh, then. Uh, 
uh, Medvedev, uh, he uh, blamed us. He said, look, it's uh, a what you are doing, guys. Uh, this is uh, impossible. And I must tell you, this is really a very difficult uh, uh, path which we have chosen. It doesn't work uh, like that, uh, that uh, yes, we have approved uh, constitution uh, with the parliamentary path, but it doesn't mean that next day uh, after approval it, it, it comes. Uh, Russia also watches what we are doing. Russia also uh, sometimes discuss, uh, uh, Russia doesn't have this experience of parliamentarism. Russia doesn't uh, translate into Russian language books about parliamentarism, which will be accessible for us also. So a lot of people, our people, they don't read English uh, uh, books. And uh, when I go to uh, uh, Russian uh, uh, bookstores, I can't find uh, books about the parliamentarism, which will be very uh, useful and helpful to us. Uh, so, uh, Russia was not involved, uh, uh, it's really so. Moldova probably closer, they have some relations. Georgia, uh, Georgia, what do you think? Uh, uh, Russia was involved in 2001, 2003? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the, the Rose Revolution, uh, it was completely internal process, uh, so. Uh, in our case, yes, uh, they tried to help to uh, archive in 2005. Uh, uh, but uh, in 2010, they've been not happy with Bakiev, and that's why uh, they've done, uh, so they just uh, abstained, uh, in other words, and uh, we've done uh, revolution, uh, thanks God, uh, uh, in such a clean situation. Mm -hmm. My name is Regina Kuzminkova. I'm a Detroit teacher, instructor. Uh, you said that Russia is the main donor. So we all know that the, the one who pays or is paying orders the music. Mm -hmm. So to what extent is your government influenced by the Russian government? You mentioned Med Medvedev and Putin and the I, I, I probably, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the question, but uh, I probably was uh, not uh, um, uh, completely correct to say that uh, Russia is main donor. Among other donors, for example, uh, Japan is donor. Uh, we are recipient country. In, uh, in, in the world uh, such a um, card. Uh, and uh, uh, Russia is one of the donors in uh, our part of the world, uh, uh, especially for uh, those uh, uh, fragile countries within the uh, former Soviet Union. So uh, Russia was uh, not involved, uh, to my mind, uh, before to this international package of uh, assistance. And then the route uh, uh, was cleared towards to us. So the, in that sense, I said uh, Russia is donor. But uh, regarding uh, and, and bilaterally, Russia helps a lot also. Just uh, over this uh, last six years, uh, the read of uh, the debt of Kyrgyzstan to Russia, it's, it was about $300 million. Uh, so. Assistance is there, but your question, to what extent Russia influence? I would say yes, influence on uh, many ways, uh, but uh, uh, still we have, uh, um, we have uh, freedom of uh, hands and space. Uh, for example, uh, we do not recognize uh, Crimea's uh, status today. So, uh, and so Russia doesn't, uh, push and uh, pressure us. Uh, I, I'm sure that no country uh, of the former Soviet Union uh, recognized this status. And uh, um, Russia understands this, and each of us, we do uh, have own position. Uh, in, in, this, uh, uh, in this new circumstances, when uh, Russia involved in uh, Syria, for example, uh, Russia needs uh, such uh, assistance from allies, the closest allies. Uh, uh, I would say that uh, we don't have such uh, pressure from Russia. But uh, otherwise, uh, certainly we are ally of Russia. That's for sure. Yes, 
Thank you very much, uh, Rosa Isakovna, for your wonderful presentation. Originally from Kyrgyzstan, so this topic is very dear to my heart. My question concerns the problem of uranium tailings in Kyrgyzstan. Unfortunately, one of the reputations that the Central Asian countries, including Kyrgyzstan, have is that there is a very um, acute problem of radi radiation contamination in the Republic, which is due to the fact that there was uranium mining which left behind uh, uranium tailings. And in my view, it seems to me that Russia and Kyrgyzstan actually may uh, maybe deepen their collaboration in cleaning up the territories. And uh, I wonder what is your view on that. I know that Russia is helping Kyrgyzstan a lot already, but it seems to me that there may be maybe more efforts to be done. And just also to add uh, to um, when you mentioned that there is a, a lot of um, entertainment industry in Kyrgyzstan, and you know it's a very fun country to visit. I also am very proud, and I always tell people that Kyrgyzstan hosts World Nomad Games, and this mm -hmm. year <laughs> it will be the third in, um, yeah. Nomad Games. And I wonder if you maybe know how this idea of these games came um, to life, and if you are aware of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have uh, some uh, uh, such uh, very difficult problems. Uh, this uh, uranium tails, uh, uranium uh, was uh, worked out somewhere of uh, um, uh, stations worked uh, in Ukraine or Russia, but tails came uh, to uh, this uh, uh, to the province and was saved uh, in our parts uh, of the world. And today we don't know what to do with them, and uh, uh, quite uh, dangerous. Uh, uh, situation with them that uh, uh, landslides uh, and earthquakes, whatever, it will bring those tails uh, to the uh, rivers uh, from, and uh, uh, the whole Fergana Valley or other parts, they might contaminate it. Uh, this is really something uh, serious. Like RLC, I don't uh, really know how it will be solved, but this is, uh, we, uh, we have a couple of such a very uh, difficult problems in Central Asia. Uh, I know that uh, today uh, um, for every country, for Kyrgyzstan, for Tajikistan, there is a uh, fund open in uh, uh, the European uh, Bank of Reconstruction uh, and Development, and the European Union uh, give their uh, a portion of investment, uh, something about uh, 15, 12 million dollars, and uh, they call uh, all. The, uh, they, they turn to all countries to put their investments uh, also. Uh, but difficult. Uh, so far, you see, th this is not something what uh, you should immediately solve. And it needs a lot of investment, big money. And uh, I do know that uh, it is, again, it depends. Uh, of, uh, nothing is happening, uh, thanks God, nothing. And if something happened, then, uh, of course, this is a big catastrophe. So I would say that... Uh, uh, there are no uh, such uh, uh, spare money left for, uh, for, uh, by donors that they would immediately give to solve this problem. That's how it is. Uh, Nomad Games, uh, that was, uh, for we, we would have the third time this year. Uh, but honestly, I must tell you, we have so many other problems that why they should do this Nomad Games? I have this question, really. Because we have a lot of urgent uh, d developmental problems, uh, healthcare or uh, social issues or education, but uh, sounds like tourism uh, might bring uh, a lot of money and so they have enthusiasts for uh, these nomad games and uh, will be, uh, this is of course uh, very attractive, uh, beautiful, uh, authentic, uh, uh, indigenous and whatever. So, and uh, of, uh, there is a call for tourists to come from all of the world. Rosa Isakovna, um, it's an honor to have you. So, um, I, t I have two questions. One is, sorry, my, I'm Mahabad by Mirzaeva, so for those who don't know, originally from Kyrgyzstan, teach here uh, management and policy. So uh, two questions. One is, um, what lessons have you learned in your experience as a president? Uh, and it's, you are not just president in <laughs> usual terms. You are ruling Kyrgyzstan in a very tumultuous times. 
And if it wasn't hard enough to govern a small, fragile country with limited resources in intricate game of Central Asian politics and global politics, you also ruled the country in the time when we had actually major uh, ethnic conflict. And in just less than two years, not only you, you turned the tide of um, authoritarianism and corruption back, but you also made country more democratic, uh, put power in the more parliamentary elected, more, uh, I guess, a democratic elected parliament, and changed the regime. That's actually very significant achievement. So I'd be curious to see what lessons did you learn about and what insight to wisdom you can share that made this happen. And the uh, second question is related, looking forward. What are some of the strengths you could build on to keep <laughs> pushing forward <laughs> in this mm -hmm. difficult you know, um, challenge of really governing a small country in such an um, unfavorable uh, environment? Thank you. The country is not small, as you know, right? Uh, it's uh, 200,000 uh, uh, square kilometer. It's uh, not uh, uh, every uh, European country. It's about 70,000, uh, even smaller. So, uh, of course, we do live uh, in the valleys among mountains. 95% uh, of the country are mountains. And uh, the highest, uh, 7,400 meters, uh, it's... Uh, uh, regarding country, and of course we are small country, six million population. Uh, we have uh, we are bordering with China, one billion three hundred million, and we border with uh, uh, India, which is another billion. So uh, not directly bordering with India, but still this is our neighborhood, uh, six million. Uh, it's. Uh, China. I go and meet, for example, with Xi Jinping, uh, President Xi Jinping. What? Uh, I, I'm really a, a tiny, tiny uh, country for, for China. Uh, certainly, th th there is uh, no doubt about this. But uh, again, uh, look, you, uh, uh, f uh, today uh, f uh, there are some historical uh, movies. Uh, I've seen other day Churchill, for example, uh, what, Darkest Days or Darkest Hours uh, and so on. And so there are a lot of other uh, movies. Uh, and uh, I, I would uh, uh, call uh, to go back uh, in your history of uh, the United States. Uh, uh, today, what uh, when uh, uh, President uh, Obama leaves uh, the White House and uh, Mr. Trump says goodbye and he sits uh, in the helicopter and uh, goes uh, completely uh, to another uh, place and so on, it's settled because he's what uh, uh, today today's president is forty six yeah or forty five uh, forty fifth president of the United States. So uh, he's number 45, I guess, or num uh, number 46. In my country, I was number uh, three uh, uh, president. So, and uh, nothing is settled. So many problems. Uh, we want to do as in civilized world. Uh, after me, President Atambayev, he just left. Uh, uh, the whole nation applaud, and so we are so thankful that he left. The Constitution says that he should leave. After six years, he should leave. But our presidents in Central Asia, they don't like to leave. They were, as soon as they get this position, they just want to be there forever. So, and uh, uh, using all the ways and all the means, uh, uh, changing the Constitution, they just stay there forever. And uh, uh, we, we want to, uh, say that, uh, look, uh, rule of law is like that, that Constitution says, and you should uh, leave, uh, don't make a, как uh, сказать, одолжение, <laughs> favor, don't, don't make a favor to the nation, you should leave, you, sh you serve to the nation six years, and please leave, that's it, and uh, uh, we do know that uh, some of them, they are from the beginning of the country until today, and uh, uh, 
uh, you know, in China, they are uh, today after uh, Zen Zimin, who was uh, from the beginning of our independence, then Hu Zintao came, now Xi Jinping. So, and so why it is in our part of the world? In other words, um, uh, Atambayev, when he left, he left uh, the whole his cabinet after him. So, new president was like Kokond. So he he's the president, but uh, he can't work because uh, uh, he's uh, surrounded by all this uh, uh, personnel and cadre of uh, the previous president. And he's supposed to sort of uh, do exactly what uh, uh, the, uh, from the president left uh, want from him, uh, wants from him. So that was the situation, and. Uh, uh, now uh, we are learning again from the uh, West and from the, the developed democracies that there is a hundred days when you should uh, show up uh, what you can do, really you can do something or not. Uh, there is a, uh, such a, um, all sorts of such a, uh, marks and uh, um, uh, mechanisms that uh, how it was uh, uh, change of one president for another and so on. I would say my, uh, for what I've learned, uh, we should take our time. We should take our time, don't push us, don't make rush uh, regarding our development. We should learn and at the same time, uh, you should not make a harsh uh, judgment that uh, look, this is bad, this is not uh, exactly what uh, we thought about you and so on and so on. Uh, uh, I guess my country shows sincerity and devotion to democratic developments. Uh, so far, over these 25 years, we got five presidents. We, uh, we've been uh, for scaling up, trickling up on the path of democracy. We made uh, probably uh, a lot of mistakes, but uh, we are learning and we are taking with us uh, the whole nation. And I'm happy to say that uh, we have so many young people who never will give up from the freedom of speech, from the freedom of assembly, and so on. People are learning and uh, leading on this uh, very difficult path. Otherwise, why not? Uh, we would sit and uh, listen to one fellow who would uh, uh, tell us how to live, what to do, and, uh, and so on and so on. So I think uh, mm, uh, this is uh, what, uh, that, uh, it was the question what I've learned or what, uh, yeah? Is it, uh, is it the question was uh, <laughs> I learned? And uh, I learned that uh, you, should, uh, be, you should be devoted to your choice. You should not give up. You should go this way as you have chosen. And uh, uh, you, uh, uh, look, uh, the, the best parts of the world, uh, 50, the, the most developed, uh, the, uh, this system, it works. And why it will not work in our country? That, that's what we do realize. If there is a question? Strengths, I guess, uh, should be like uh, uh, the most uh, 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 the most important. Uh, we should uh, um, uh, give uh, equal rights to women in in, in Central Asia. So uh, it's a very hierarchical, very traditional society, and uh, uh, we, uh, it was not difficult for me to find the best educated young women. Uh, to appoint as uh, prosecutor general, as uh, uh, head of the Supreme Court, uh, as uh, president of the National Bank, uh, 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 in counting chamber, we call this uh, Shotne Palata. So uh, that was not difficult. And it's not just uh, my signature. You need certainly this person supposed to go via parliament to be approved by parliament. So anyway, it was not difficult. But as soon as you go to the level in uh, uh, region, in oblast, 
you would not uh, find uh, such a people. Women are in very hierarchical society they live there. Uh, they have uh, a lot of things to do. Uh, husbands and men uh, uh, population, they put them uh, and show their uh, place uh, and so on. But uh, in my country still we have very active uh, women uh, acti uh, we have activist women, and uh, what is good uh, in uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, in Kazakhstan as well, I, I'm sure. And I hope that the whole Central Asia will be uh, really um, with the equal rights women will be. But uh, what, uh, what else? Boku uh the -huh. Thank you so much for your very interesting presentation. My name is Dmitry Buzadji. I am a professor of the Russian language and Russian translation and interpretation here. I have two related questions. You mentioned an interesting thing. You said that it would be interesting to have, it would be nice, useful to have more books about parliamentarism uh, translated into Russian because they could be used uh, by people in Kyrgyzstan because uh, not everybody reads English. So my question is, what's the state of literary and film translation in your country? Do you even have interpreters and publishing houses that translate books directly from English, German, French, Chinese, mm -hmm. Japanese? Mm -hmm. Do you mostly rely on Russian translations? Do you translate from Russian translations? And the uh, another short related question. I know that there is some activity within the CIS uh, on fostering programs to support literary translation projects in former uh, Soviet republics. I don't know if you could comment on that. Thank you. Thank you for this question. I, uh, uh, I do translate uh, in my foundation uh, uh, books uh, from uh, uh, English uh, into Kyrgyz language. Uh, this is uh, our contribution into the establishment of uh, Kyrgyz language as state language. Uh, so uh, Russian uh, Russian books, I guess uh, today it's it's there is no problem uh, absolutely. So many books in Russian language, and uh, I have seen uh, Dmitry. I don't know how often you uh, go to Russia, and uh, recently I found in Moscow such a, a bookstore, Falanster. It's very such a, for, for me it was a very special bookstore and uh, I have seen that uh, 500 copies uh, they publish also. Uh, so little, but uh, there are so many books uh, today uh, published uh, uh, in, in Russia. In my country, uh, of, um, translation of movies, uh, or uh, books, uh, this is big problem still. Uh, we don't uh, uh, publish uh, so many, but uh, uh, we do, uh, each of us, we do a lot of contribution. I've been to Mongolia and I have seen that so many books, good books translated into Mongolian uh, language. Uh, a lot of business books, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Elon Musk or Alibaba, if it is in English, then they would uh, translate this into Mongolian language. I think uh, this is uh, really a good enlightening work uh, that uh, they do for their nation, for their young people. In our case, uh, I, uh, uh, I started uh, such a serial uh, uh, of publication uh, introducing to my nation uh, the famous people of the world. So, uh, we do have uh, uh, such a prospect uh, uh, avenue of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. And there is even a, a statue, a very famous uh, statue of Mahatma Gandhi, which is uh, of, um, uh, you've seen in London probably. So, and uh, uh, nobody knows Mahatma Gandhi in my country. Uh, who is uh, this man? And so I have translated this uh, search of truth for uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, um, uh, memoirs from English into Kyrgyz language. We didn't uh, find uh, Russian, whatever, I mean, from English. Uh, I have translated uh, 
uh, from uh, Russian language, uh, checking with uh, Chinese, my father, Deng Xiaoping, this is uh, his daughter's uh, book, uh, Deng Xiaoping's daughter's uh, book. Uh, uh, recently, we have translated uh, best uh, speeches of Churchill into Kyrgyz language. Uh, um, but uh, it was, again, from English, uh, we've been in touch with uh, foundation um, of uh, uh, Churchill's, uh, estate of uh, Churchill's. Um, uh, now, I got just recently, uh, I was talking to the US uh, uh, embassy, and uh, uh, we'll translate uh, a profile of courages, uh, yeah, Profile of Courages, I guess, of this Kennedy's book. Uh, and this will be my uh, presentation of uh, uh, Kennedy to my nation. But I don't have this in Russian, this book. Uh, I want to translate Salman Khan's book uh, about this uh, school, schooling, right? Uh, about his program, Salman Khan, who uh, you know probably, uh, who, uh, who uh, wrote the book about uh, the... Um, program, uh, Han Academy books, right? Uh, 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 site, uh, Han Academy. Uh, but uh, I don't, so in other words, what I want to tell you, if there is a Russian uh, translation, it will be much easier for us. But uh, we do translate this from English also. And uh, we have uh, such a young people who uh, really know uh, uh, English and uh, uh, we do. But, uh, um, uh, Georgia, for example, in Georgia, I, I do see there are so many movies in Georgian and new movies in Georgian. Uh, somehow they managed to do this. It is not the case in my country yet. Jacob. Hi, my name's Gordon Morey. Um, as we know, there's um, a big demographic problem with the youth in Central Asian and, and uh, former Soviet republics leaving the country for work or schooling or whatever and not returning. It, what, you had mentioned a university program. What else is Kyrgyzstan doing to try to avoid or overcome this demographic problem? You mean uh, surplus of uh, young people and uh, uh, if with we them leaving the country and, and not uh -huh. returning. All right, all right. Mm. Uh, it is a difficult problem, I must tell you. It is not easy. Governments so far, uh, they do rely on Russia, that uh, they do live and they stay in Russia. And Kyrgyz people you would find from Kaliningrad up to Kuril uh, Isles. Uh, so they, uh, in, in such a spectrum, they do live there. And uh, the same with uh, Uzbeks and Tajiks. Uh, and uh, um, in uh, my country, unfortunately, employment matter. It is the most difficult. I do the program, for example, myself. I, in my foundation, I have a project, Mekendeshter. Uh, it means uh, uh, for, um, uh, my uh, uh, compatriots. Compatriots. I want to build this institute of diaspora. This is, uh, again, a world program. In many countries, they do this. Uh, and I want to bind uh, minds and hearts of young people uh, with the country, whatever they learned there, wherever they are. But uh, please uh, bring back uh, to Kyrgyzstan. And uh, all of them, they are very concerned living somewhere uh, that uh, their children, they are losing the language and so on and so on. But. Uh, uh, so far, they can't find employment uh, back in the country, and uh, uh, this is uh, the point. We don't have enough investment in our countries. So investment is a big problem. Uh, waiting for the Russian investment, uh, as uh, uh, I said, uh, Eurasian Economic Alliance doesn't work so successfully as it was designed. Uh, uh, Chinese uh, for investment, they come in huge mass, 
uh, huge companies, and they bring their workers. So, in other words, employment is a big problem. Our young people, they leave and they uh, leave the country and go abroad, and uh, a lot of them in Russia, in Kazakhstan also. Uh, but uh, uh, how to bring back, uh, this is, uh, this, uh, the government should now work out. Uh, I do what I can do, this uh, diaspora uh, institute. I do a Biennale once in two years uh, forum for diaspora. Um, and uh, uh, I do expose of situation in Kyrgyzstan, what we reached of, what we are about, and uh, um, uh, introduce them uh, sort of new formulas of activity. They help a lot to their uh, villages, uh, to their uh, to the schools which they uh, they graduated from, and uh, that sort of uh, uh, such a, a program. Uh, but um, employment and uh, uh, bring back uh, those people. This is still uh, we are really in transition, in serious transition. Hello. Uh, first off, thank you so much. It's an honor to have you here on our campus. Uh, my name is Jacob Dwyer, and I am a student of the Development, Practice, and Policy School, as well as a returned Peace Corps volunteer from Kyrgyzstan. And uh, my question is, what do you believe the role of the international community should be in Kyrgyzstan or generally in Central Asia? Uh, and uh, knowing that, for example, the United Nations worked in Kyrgyzstan uh, with the Kyrgyz government during the uh, ethnic conflict in the South in 2010. Um, so what should the role of the international community be, as well as what areas should the international community work, work with both the government of the Kyrgyz Republic and with civil society um, starting now and moving forward? Thank you. Jacob speaks uh, such a beautiful Kyrgyz language, unbelievable. I, uh, I, I, I'm really struck uh, by your knowledge of uh, language. Uh, um, look, uh, we, we would need uh, um, uh, so much assistance and globalization. All of us, uh, of, um, uh, each country of uh, the former Soviet Union, we've been very closed, right? Uh, and uh, no communication with the world. And uh, our young people, uh, for I would respond to, again to your question, to the previous question. Our young people, they won't go abroad. They just want, uh, they have even uh, jobs and probably will be paid uh, not uh, uh, less than somewhere uh, uh, in uh, Moscow or uh, wherever, because uh, they uh, supposed to pay a lot of money uh, for uh, uh, to live there, right? Um, but uh, they want to leave uh, Kyrgyzstan just to see the world. So, uh, with this regard, I would say that uh, still the desire of people to learn about the world is huge. Is huge, and so we would need uh, still assistance in. Uh, many ways. We do possess also a lot of good experience, a lot of things uh, which we uh, learned in the Soviet days, uh, uh, our uh, um, tradition, uh, such a uh, indigenous tradition. They are uh, also rich and good, but uh, still uh, this uh, desire to go and l learn, I would uh, say, a big one. We need a lot of assistance in all the, in economics and uh, uh, politics. Uh, we don't have think tanks, uh, which would be very hel helpful also. So you are a university community, and uh, uh, to, um, to, to uh, research and explore uh, Kyrgyzstan's uh, uh, chances uh, in this part, this is also for us, uh, very uh, important. Although I said that we have a couple of good universities, uh, which uh, uh, Academy of the OSC also we have. And a lot of uh, students from the West, they come to the Academy of the OSC to, uh, to study uh, situation in Central Asia overall, which is also good. Uh, so uh, I would say that uh, um, probably it is about every country. Look, we have so many, uh, uh, volunteers from uh, Japan or from Korea, they also come to, uh, to uh, 
uh, to Kyrgyzstan to learn about our countries. And they also speak Kyrgyz language beautifully. And uh, again, it's shocking for us that uh, they come to learn the language. So this is uh, probably uh, the international life about uh, of 21st century. that uh, is related to what uh, uh, Maha has asked. And uh, it's about the events in 2010 in Osh when you just took uh, the helm uh, you know, of the government. The reason why I'm curious about the mechanics, what really transpired and how it was the fire that was so dangerous was put out is because you know, nobody is immune from the repetition of those conflicts. So I believe there could be, you know, if in a few words you could describe what transpired, how did you find out, uh, what were your initial um, impulses, you know, whom to go to, whom to talk to, how to s stop this conflict, and uh, what was the outcome and the lesson that you've learned. Because, uh, you know, many of us who study international politics look at those uh, areas uh, that are potentially very explosive, you know, is something that we need to keep an eye on. But for our students, it's important, and for uh, the military who are here, it's important to know from someone who was just in the eye of a storm, you know. So what was your reaction when you were told? What was your first impulse? What worked? What did not work? And what do we all need to know about OSH if, God forbid, that will come back, that unrest? Thank you. Un unfortunately, OSH uh, events, uh, um, th this is, uh, it has such a nature uh, of repeating. Uh, it took place in 70s and then in 1990 and uh, again in 2010 when I was uh, there as uh, head of the interim government. Uh, um, I hope that uh, we'll overcome of this uh, situation. We've learned a lot these days, and uh, United Nations was instrumental, um, uh, very, very instrumental. Uh, again, I was in New York now, uh, from where uh, Mr. Guterres, uh, he turned to the international community to raise the toll of uh, uh, peace building fund. Uh, uh, peace building fund is uh, very important for each uh, country in crisis and uh, peace building fund uh, gives immediate uh, 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 such a financial resources to build up the country a lot of uh, housing was uh, burned down and uh, uh, before the winter will come we're supposed to uh, build uh, those uh, the, the houses for the people so and uh, today, uh, uh, they uh, gather 250 million per year uh, of this for this peace building fund, and uh, it needs to be at least 500 million. And uh, of, uh, the the whole sense of this uh, meeting was: uh, look, uh, prevention is the most important. Prevention of conflicts, and uh, if we do not spend money for prevention, then of course. Uh, uh, to, uh, to to deal with the conflict, it's much much uh, um, expensive, much more expensive. Uh, uh, look at uh, such a numbers that uh, 15 billion today the world spends for the peacekeeping operation, 15 billion dollars, whereas uh, uh, for the um, um, uh, for, for the production of arms, straight arms, it is $5.6 trillion. So this is uncomparable uh, uh, such uh, numbers. And uh, I don't know if I'll be politically correct or not, but uh, uh, exactly a month ago, as you remember, uh, the United States, uh, uh, France, and... Uh, uh, who was that? Uh, Great, Britain. Great Britain. Three countries that sent uh, uh, missiles to Syria, for example. What what the cost of this uh, of, uh, of this operation? And for us, uh, really, uh, uh, the the tragedy of Syria were uh, so many uh, the the people they need uh, so much uh, assistance, and they now scattered. Uh, 
through the whole Europe. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, uh, prevention of conflicts. This is uh, something what uh, the most important. In our case, uh, what's happened? We knew that it might, uh, it might happen something uh, bad. Uh, there are a lot of mechanisms throughout the world. Uh, OECA, it works in my country. And OECA does uh, such a uh, monitoring uh, of uh, uh, all these uh, hot uh, problems. Um, relations between uh, ethnic groups, uh, uh, how it goes ups and down and so on. And uh, it's uh, a very regular monitoring they do. Everyone reads and that's it. And uh, it, uh, it, uh, everyone thinks, oh, thanks God, it's not today, it's not uh, uh, tomorrow, and so on and so on. Uh, I think uh, we should pay uh, serious attention to those spots, hot spots. We should uh, uh, know about this, we should train people, we should uh, be ready to any such explosion. When it's happened in uh, uh, Osh, uh, 2010, uh, June 2010, uh, no, I was in Bishkek and uh, uh, it was uh, interim government's activity uh, those days, uh, but uh, we knew that uh, situation is uh, very, very um, hot. Uh, and uh, when it, it took place, uh, we started to send uh, um, our militaries uh, to Osh because we don't have their um, permanent uh, stay of uh, units, military units. We badly need, uh, by the way, how do they call it? Gas. People have met with No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sort of, yeah, that sort of special, such a, we did not have uh, in the places. We still do not have in uh, cities, uh, in uh, some remote cities. What for? Our police uh, doesn't have uh, all this stuff. And uh, uh, ro robber, uh, what did you do? Yeah, yeah, dubinki. Sticks, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of, so this is very special, such a, um, uh, I mean, we did not, we've been not ready to all of this. So should uh, such a place is, uh, be uh, ready, uh, uh, equipped with all this stuff? This is uh, our readiness, should be sort of such a readiness. Today, of course, we have this uh, in Bishkek city and in Osh city. Uh, but uh, by the way, in Bishkek city also, of um, two revolution we have gone through, but we didn't have all this stuff. And now, uh, of course, uh, they, they started uh, to equip uh, themselves. Uh, then uh, uh, it was a dramatic development, uh, very dramatic development. And uh, when people started to die, then I turned to uh, Russia's uh, uh, president and uh, Russian president, uh, uh, turned uh, to the uh, ODKB, CCTO, I guess, yeah, well, this is the acronym in English. So, and uh, um, uh, meanwhile, uh, in, in our case, in uh, three, four days, it, it finished. It, uh, people calmed down and uh, they uh, stopped to uh, kill each other. Uh, the same conflict in 1990, uh, Soviet army was three months in Osh. So it was Osh and Uzgen uh, those days. So uh, this time uh, people's uh, uh, self-immunity, it works very well, uh, seems uh, to us. And uh, uh, we, we've sent a lot of uh, uh, militaries, a lot of uh, uh, people there to Osh and uh, uh, one moment was when uh, water and uh, food supposed to be sent there. And another moment was when I started, uh, uh, I gave uh, instruction to look after strategical objects, uh, like uh, we have Toktogul hydro station. 
And uh, if something will happen, then the water from this station will completely uh, landslide the whole Fergana Valley. So, and so that uh, that's sort of so. You would uh, think about many uh, such uh, um, points to be safe, and uh, uh, that was the situation. And. Uh, um, Immediately, international assistance came out. Probably our events came to the CNN and uh, to BBC and other uh, channels. Uh, and uh, I must tell you that uh, President Obama was very, very helpful. And uh, uh, Michael McFall, uh, President Obama, all of them, they turned, immediately turned to, to us. Uh, uh, asking what exactly we should do, how to help, and so on. I mean, the, all sorts of communication. Anna, I can't tell you the story now. It's like movie. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, let me thank uh, Rosie Sakhman. So today we met uh, the revolutionary. I don't know how many real revolutionaries you've seen. I haven't. So uh, Rosie Sakhman is the only one. A thinker, a mother, a politician, uh, all those things, and a tremendous inspiration for all of us, not just women, but also all of us uh, looking at how one can serve his country or her country, how ca one can serve the cause of peace. Um, thank you very much, uh, Rose Sakovna, and we look forward to Thursday when we will talk hopefully more about the work, or your work as the foundation head and uh, your work at, uh, as the uh, member of a very prestigious and important international boards. And um, thank you for being here. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs>